Two years ago, I moved from my hometown in South Florida all the way to San Diego to pursue my dreams and basically build a new life for myself. I built a strong community out there. I was living in a beautiful apartment. I was in a relationship and now I'm back home in Florida. I've decided to move back in with my parents at 28 years old and essentially start over. And in today's video, I wanna share with you how I am moving through this transitional period of my life and how you can too, if you are also starting over in any capacity, whether you just left a relationship, you're transitioning into a new career, or like me, you've also moved. We're gonna be talking about mindset shifts you can make and also practical action steps that will help you move through this big change. And I also want this video to serve as a reminder that it's never too late to start over. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Nat and on this channel we talk all about mindset, personal development, entrepreneurship, and so much more. So if that aligns with you, you can hit the little subscribe button and also the little notification bell to get notified the next time I post a video. So you may be wondering, why did I decide to come back home? Well, there are many reasons and if I dove into every single reason, I could be here forever. <laughs> but the main reason is that but I was having a challenging time out there in San Diego. Like, I'm just gonna be very transparent. It was very difficult for me to be out there without family, without a strong support system. Even though I was making friends, I was in a relationship, I was still on the other side of the country and I was missing out on a lot of family time. I was missing out on watching my nephews grow up. And even though I loved San Diego so much, and I still do, it's literally like one of my favorite cities, I just realized that there's nothing quite like family and there's nothing quite like home. And I feel like I really got what I needed from San Diego. So I decided to leave. I decided to come back. And my intention was to come back to Florida for a short period of time and then move back to San Diego eventually. But honestly, I think I'm gonna stay here. I mean, I don't know what the future holds for me and I can't say for certain that this is where I'm gonna stay forever. Certainly not my parents' house, but I mean in South Florida in general. I'm kind of just keeping it open, kind of just seeing where life takes me. But I do think that I want to stay close to family, so I think I'll be here in South Florida. And so I wanted to make today's video because it is a lot <laughs> when you go through a very transitional period of your life. When you're going through a lot of change, it brings up a lot. And I have really had to work through so many things coming up and I've only been here for four weeks and I feel like I've learned so much about change and about myself and about how I respond to change. And I think what can be so scary about change is that it's uncertain. You like enter a period of uncertainty where you don't know what's next. And if you are a planner like me, if you struggle with anxiety like me, like uncertainty is scary. Not knowing your next steps, not knowing what the future holds, it's scary. It's very uncertain. And with those feelings of uncertainty comes a lot of emotions, a lot of negative thoughts, a lot of spirals. So before I talk about the things that actually help you move through change, I first wanna kind of share some mindset shifts that I've made throughout the past couple of weeks when it comes to starting over. Because as you can imagine, and as I'm sure maybe you relate as well, change and starting over brings up a lot of feelings of failure, feelings of being left behind, feelings of abandonment, comparing yourself to other people, feeling like you're just behind in life, like you're not following, you know, the certain timeline that society expects from us. And you go on social media and you see all these people are buying houses and having kids and getting married. And if you don't have any of those things, or if you feel like you're starting over from scratch, it can feel so isolating. So I wanna share a couple of mindset shifts to kind of remind you that it's never too late to start over. So the first thing is that starting over is a privilege. Not everybody has the opportunity to start over essentially and to rebuild their lives. I know how much of a privilege I have for being able to come back to my parents' house. You know, I could have stayed in San Diego. I could have figured it out. I could have made it work, but I also knew that I had the support system of my family and I could just come back and like take some time for myself and reset and rebuild and that is a privilege not everybody has that opportunity so just remind yourself that starting over is a privilege and think about this time as a reset and a time for you to really think about what it is that you want for yourself moving forward I think when it comes to like these big transitional periods or these times of change, I really like to think of them as like an opportunity to reset your life and really think about what it is that you want. Because I feel like 
we can kind of just go in our day-to-day -day lives, not really pausing and thinking about what we want moving forward, not really pausing and just like being with ourselves and thinking about our futures and all of that because we're just like, trying to get from one place to the next. But then when we have something happen in our lives, whether we lose a job, we end a relationship, like me, move back home and kind of leave everything that I had behind, you kind of are forced to sit with yourself and be like, wait a second, like what do I actually want for myself? And it's a really beautiful place to be because the possibilities are endless. I have the opportunity right now to reset and really think about what I truly want for my life and how I want to build it because it's up to me. It's all up to me. And another mindset shift is to really just think about how long life is especially in our 20s and our 30s, like we kind of, I mean, I can't speak for 30s because I'm 28, but especially in our 20s, I feel like we're constantly comparing ourselves to other people. You know, like this person has this really successful career. This person has a home and a, a marriage and a kids and all of these things. And we think like, why isn't that happening for me? Like the older I get, it feels like, feels like I'm running out of time. It feels like I'm on this like race and I'm not winning, like I'm not getting ahead. But then if you really think about how long life truly is, and like, let's say the average person lives to what? Like 80, 85, I don't even know actually what the average person lives to. I'm 28. That means I still have like 60 years left of life. 60, 70 years, that's a long life that I still have yet to live. Even if you're watching this and you're 30, 40, 50, even if you're 60, there's still so much life ahead of you. So what if you have to reset a little bit and start over? Think of this as a time to get ahead in life. That's kind of also something else I've been thinking about too, is how, yes, on the outside, it looks like I took a couple steps back, right? I was living by myself in this beautiful apartment, in a relationship, had all of these things and all of these friends and this beautiful life. And now I'm back home where I have no friends. I don't really have a community out here because everybody, everybody left, everybody moved, everybody's living their own lives. I had to take a couple steps back with my career as well. So it's like from the outside looking in, it looks like I took a couple steps back and maybe I did. But the way I kind of like to think about it is almost like a slingshot, how you have to pull it back so that I can shoot even further ahead. So like, yes, you may have to take a couple steps back, but think about how far ahead you can get just by taking a couple steps back to reset and start over. This kind of factored into my decision about whether I wanted to move back or not is I could have stayed in San Diego. I could have made it work. I could have hustled and worked hard and I could have stayed there, but I chose to come back and take a couple steps back to just reset, recenter myself, get in a better place with my finances, with my career, with all of these different things that I'm working on right now so that I can be further ahead in a year than I would have been if I had stayed. Sometimes we have to make like momentary sacrifices to reset and to get ourselves in better places in the future. And you kind of have to think about delayed gratification, long-term delayed gratification versus instant gratification. It would have been instant gratification gratification for me to stay in San Diego, but I chose delayed gratification. I chose to think of my long-term instead. Being back under my parents' roof where I literally thought I would never come back to Florida, honestly, but I'm back. And there are times when it sucks when I'm like, oh, I wish I could have stayed in San Diego. I wish I could still have my own place. But I know that taking a couple steps back is what's gonna allow me to prepare for an even better future. Okay, now that we kind of talked about the mindset shifts, I wanna talk about the emotions <laughs> that come up. Because like I said, when you're going through a lot of change, the reason it can be so emotional is because of the fact that it's very uncertain. You kind of enter a period of life where it's uncertain. You don't know what's next. So with that comes a lot of emotion. And when I tell you, <laughs> my emotions have been very volatile the past couple of weeks. I finally feel like I'm in a better place now, but there were a couple of days over these last couple of weeks where I felt like I could cry at the drop of a hat. <laughs> and so I wanna share with you a couple of things that have really helped me work through those really heavy emotions that come with change and with starting over. So first of all, it's important to remind yourself to have compassion for yourself. Like I said, you are going through a transitional period of your life, a lot of change, which brings up a lot of uncertainty and inevitably that's gonna cause anxiety, especially if you already deal with anxiety and you really like to plan, you really like to know what's next, not knowing what's next can be very challenging on you emotionally. 
So have compassion for yourself. When I first came back, I was really struggling with this because there was like a, a two week period of time where I was just constantly living in the past. And it was really frustrating because I'm like, it's literally been three years. Like, why am I thinking about these things from my past? And finally, a couple of days ago, I had a serious conversation with myself where I was like, I need to hold compassion for myself. While it doesn't make logical sense that I'm living so much in the past, it's coming up for a reason. These emotions are coming up for a reason. Sometimes our emotions are just begging to be felt, validated, and acknowledged, and that's it. So just giving yourself that space to feel those emotions and reminding yourself, I am okay, I am safe. It is safe for me to feel these emotions and express these emotions. And something that has also really, really helped me is getting back into therapy. I was doing therapy when I was in San Diego and then my therapist told me that she couldn't work with me once I moved back to Florida. So I was really sad about that. And I was like, it's fine. Like, I'm just not gonna get back into therapy. Like, I'll be good. <laughs> but then after week, I think two or three of being here, I was like, no, like I, I really, really need support. So I got back into therapy. I've had two sessions so far and it has helped so much. There's actually a website that I discovered a couple of months ago. I'll leave it in the description box. It's called Open Path where they offer affordable counseling. So anywhere from $30 to $70 a session. And I don't get anything from sharing this. I just am so passionate about this because I have always felt that therapy should be accessible and affordable. And, and the reason I was never in therapy is because I could never afford $150, $200 a session. So the fact that I can get therapy now for $70 a session like that is amazing so I'll leave that in the link in the description box so you can check that out if you're interested I think it's only for the United States but I'll still leave that just in case something else that I've been doing to really work through these emotions is I started 75 hard literally the Monday after I moved I started 75 hard because I knew that I wanted to get a jump start in my habits and for me especially being somebody that does kind of struggle with anxiety and with can struggle with change and uncertainty and all of that i know that the biggest help for managing my emotions and my thoughts are my healthy habits so i really wanted to start this challenge to kind of force myself to show up for myself daily and force myself to follow through on my positive habits i made it to day 22 and then I had a really off day and I fell off and part of me was wondering like should I even start again because I feel like I already got what I wanted from it but I decided yesterday that I am starting again so today is day one of 75 hard because I still do kind of feel like I'm working through the emotions and the change and all of that so I just think that having some type of challenge it doesn't have to be 75 hard if you don't resonate with that for the longest time I did not trust me <laughs> the idea of doing two workouts a day just never appealed to me but then I realized that it's actually not that hard, you know? I could do a 45 minute strength training work workout at the gym and then a 45 minute walk. So it's really not that bad. But if you don't resonate with 75 hard, I think definitely having some type of challenge or something that you're working towards or something that forces you to show up for yourself, anything, whether you're joining a program or an accountability challenge, anything that forces you to actually follow through on your healthy habits, I think it's a game changer when you're going through a lot of change or when you're starting over. And like I said, I was really living in the past. So something else that I did, first of all, I realized that the reason I was living in the past is because the past is what's comfortable, it's what's familiar. And because my future kind of felt uncertain, I just had a lot of anxiety around it. And so it was just more comfortable for me to live in the past, even though it wasn't fun. Like it's not fun living in the past. It feels like, I don't know, like I just, I don't really like constantly looking in the past and feeling like that sense of nostalgia and feeling like I'm missing the past and like the past had better days because I know that I'm looking at the past with rose colored glasses. I know the reality of the past and I know that I made certain decisions to leave things in the past for good reason so i don't like living in the past but when you're going through change like i said it brings up a lot of uncertainty and it's easier to live in the past than to face your future so what i did for myself is i decided to create a strong vision for my future i decided to sit down and really think about what it is that i want for myself and how i can make my future more exciting than my past so i actually got the help of ChatGPT <laughs> to figure out how to do this and i'm gonna make a whole separate video on 
using ChatGPT to create your dream dream life because ChatGPT, <laughs> I love it. I love AI. Basically, what I did is I asked ChatGPT to help me figure out what I want for my dream life. And then it asked me a bunch of questions. I responded to all those questions. And then I told it to basically write the story of my dream life. And it was so beautiful. It literally like brought me to tears. And then I asked it to kind of like summarize it and make it a little bit smaller. So anytime I feel just like those feelings of uncertainty or I'm living in the past too much, I just kind of read my dream life story and it just makes me excited for the future. And I also think it helps doing like visualization meditations and manifestation meditations just to kind of remind yourself that there is so much potential in the future. There's so much that we have yet to experience that it's just unfair to live in the past constantly it's unfair to project our negative feelings into the future and think that it's always going to be this way because the truth is that anything can change in an instant and the last thing that i've been doing to really work through these heavy emotions is using all of my tools breath work therapy meditation i've been reading a lot of self-development books like I went a little bit crazy. I bought so many books <laughs> because it's just really been helping me. I've been listening to podcasts, watching YouTube videos, just really using all of these tools. And I don't necessarily think that all of these tools are a must every single day for the rest of your life. I do think that when you're going through a lot of change and a lot of uncertainty, that's when these tools become a non-negotiable, at least for me, like it is a non-negotiable for me every single day to do my morning routine, to do something in the morning to make myself feel better. So something I've been doing, started this two days ago, is breath work twice a day, morning and night. I follow the Wim Hof breath work. It's a 10 minute video and it literally, chef's kiss. <laughs> I discovered this YouTube video years ago when I was going through a breakup and it completely helped me regulate my nervous system and learn how to regulate my own emotions. Oh my god, I love it. Every couple of months I remember that this video exists and I come back to it whenever I go through really stressful experiences in life. I've been doing it now, I think today is day three of me doing it twice a day and I just feel like a brand new person. It just brings so much clarity and so much ease and it just improves my life experience like tenfold. So highly recommend checking that out. Okay, now let's talk about the practical action steps to help you move through a transitional period of your life and to start over. So step one, like I said, is to really work on improving your mindset and seeing this time of your life as a privilege and as, as an opportunity to reset and rebuild for yourself. And then step number two is work through those really heavy emotions. Give yourself that space and that compassion to work through the emotions that come up, even if they don't make logical sense, even if you are experiencing emotions that you haven't experienced in a long time, even if things that are coming up that you just, you thought you already worked through, just allow yourself to feel and to be in the emotions because that is what they're begging you to do, is to just be felt and expressed. Step number three, create a strong vision for yourself so that you have something to look forward to so that you can live in the present while also looking forward for the future instead of constantly living in the past. And then the last step is to become so focused on yourself and your life. Show up for yourself daily, stay consistent with your healthy habits, focus on transforming and reinventing yourself. I think that's probably my favorite thing about this time period of my life is that since I have this time and space to kind of reset and rebuild, I have literally become obsessed with self-development again. And I'm not gonna lie, I went through like a period of probably a year and a half where I felt like I was just coasting. I wasn't really watching personal development YouTube videos and reading books and doing all of those things. I was just living my life, you know? And that was fine. I feel like we go through different seasons of life, but now that I'm back in this phase of my life where I realized straight up that I am not happy with where my life is at. I am not where I want to be. And I think we can sometimes get hard on ourselves for that, but it's actually an opportunity because once you realize that, you have the opportunity to become so laser focused on yourself, your dreams, and what you truly want for yourself. And 
becoming the absolute best version of yourself. And in my next video, I'm gonna be talking all about transforming and reinventing yourself all in time for 2025. So make sure you hit the subscribe button, make sure you hit the little notification bell so you don't miss my next video. And also just as a little side note, I'm so excited to be back on YouTube. I know it's been a minute. That's something I feel very called to come back to is YouTube. This is a part of my creative expression. I love helping people. I love sharing my lessons and sharing what I'm going through. This is really like, it fulfills my soul, genuinely. So I'm excited to be back. And thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much if you are a returning subscriber and you have been subscribed for a long time or even if you just joined. I appreciate you, I appreciate your time. If you made it to the end of this video, leave me a little heart down below and I will see you in the next video. Bye.